You know, I had to do this all over again because um, we did our service yesterday, or it was on Sunday, and we had technical difficulties for real. We finally did it, but then when I watched the play black, <laughs> all I saw was me. So I decided to do it a little better than that, and uh, hey, it was all good in what we did. But here's another version. Okie dokie. Be blessed. Brothers and sisters, we're having some te technical difficulties this morning. Uh, Facebook keeps changing their platform and not allowing some things to happen. So we're going to um, get our, our uh, stream going here in one or two minutes. Still not doing it. No, I tried for my personal account. Is this a, it seems like the, there's an issue with the church page. Good morning. Yeah, we're live on this on this one. Live on the church page? Yeah. Well, not. This is my personal page. But oh, your personal. Yeah. Now, what did you want to do? If you want, if you want to start the service, then I can. Since some of them have already plugged into this, yeah, we'll might as well put this over here. Okay. <laughs> The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Let's worship God this morning like we mean it. reading this morning Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies 
Thou anointest mine head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. few minutes. We had some te technical difficulties that could not be helped. We start getting everything hooked up at 1030 so that by 11 o'clock everything is okay, but there was some kind of something wrong with the platform in terms of there's some new rules or something and we weren't able to, to do it our normal way. Anyway, from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, there's a word for us today. If you will go with me there. Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 6. Verses 6 through 11. It reads as follows. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying... Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto, uh, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey. God bless you. I want to talk this morning about do you 
and let God do himself. Do you and let God do himself. The writer tells us that Jesus had appeared to the apostles after the resurrection for some 40 days. And now he stands with them on the Mount of Olives and he has some last words for them. And the fellows have a question. They ask him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, after all that they had been through and witnessed, they were still stuck in their version of the kingdom on earth. They, they, they were stuck in the, the, the prevailing social uh, religious understanding of what was supposed to happen. The Messiah was supposed to reestablish the kingdom of, of David and they were to rule the whole planet from the city of Jerusalem. Ah, but what is our understanding was not the Lord's understanding. <laughs> His thoughts are as high above our thoughts as the heavens are above the earth. His plan always is bigger than ours. <laughs> and Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times nor the seasons that the Father has put in His own power. Uh, you fellas have to do you and stop trying to discern in detail what God is doing. Amen. Only the Father has in His power and in His mind when He's going to restore the kingdom fully. But here's what I want you to understand, that, that, that this is your assignment. When the Holy Spirit, I want you to wait in Jerusalem, and when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And they were... As Jesus was taken up, ascending to heaven, a cloud came, came, came all around him. They couldn't see him anymore. And they were still looking up. Sometimes we're looking at where he used to be Amen. in our lives. Sometimes we're so, we're so caught up in the way he was with us uh, yesterday or the day before that we're not paying attention to today. We are, we're focusing, we're stargazing. So, so sometimes we are so caught up in, in uh, trying to hang on to the way he operated before that, that we won't let him operate in a new way. We, we think we can't let him. Yes, sir. Anyway, uh, as he ascended to heaven... They were looking up. Uh, there are so many ways in which we can look up into the clouds. Yes. There are so many ways in which folks can be distracted away from witnessing. True. Amen. People ask me profound questions about the details of the book of Revelations. It, 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 most of those folk have not led one person to Jesus. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. They are so wanting to discern the stuff that only the Father knows. Amen. That they're not focused on who they are in Christ. They're so busy figuring out all of the discernment about this, that, and the other. And don't love their African-American neighbors next door to them. 
you, you, I'm going to preach this anyhow. All their Latin, Latino neighbors, all their Native American neighbors, right. all their Asian neighbors nowadays has gotten, there's a big hate thing, even from some in my own community, against people who are Asian. We are stargazing while the world is going to pot. If from Jerusalem they were to spread the gospel message throughout the world, it was spread by conquest more than by the, the real experience of God. True. <laughs> oh yeah. Jesus didn't say, take up arms and conquer the world and then drag people into being Christians. And, and certainly, it, it's, it's not even supposed to be that case for, for Islam, but it tried to do the same thing. Amen. Military conquest is not how a person can receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's going to require some real Christians yes, sir. who are about, what they, who know how to do them <laughs> and not try to do God. If, if I'm so caught up in the spectacular, and I'm telling you, I believe in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are people who speak in tongues, and I thank God I've experienced that gift. I thank God I've experienced miracles, healing, prophecy, all of it. But if you've never led one person to Jesus, there's something missing. And if you don't love, there's sure not something missing. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, have not love. I'm a sounding as sounding brass. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Do we need power now? Lord, yes. Are we waiting, expecting more power to come? Do we every morning spend enough time with God to receive power in Jerusalem before we go out into Judea? How much time do you give God? Is he calling you to be by yourself enough so you can be anointed to go out and lead others into the kingdom? The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to make you a witness. First purpose is to fill me up with power so I can be a witness. <laughs> oh yeah. They were so taken up. Jesus was taken up. And I feel good about this because I know I've been a stargazer sometimes. Thank God I'm not that all the time. I have led a few folk to Jesus. Many over a lifetime. Have you been a witness? Even when I'm not leading someone directly to Christ, am I honest about my life in a way that I can touch somebody's life and so at least sow a seed? Brother Glenn was talking about Pastor E.B. Hill and, it, and his great preaching. And he said Pastor Hill was, was honest about his struggles in his sermons. He was witnessing, not just preaching at people. If, if I forget that I'm a witness before I even am a pastor, there's something wrong with that. I remember one sermon that he preached, Jesus Christ, yesterday, today, and forever. And he talked about how he had terribly hurt a girl in high school in a terrible way. And he said uh, he had to go back home much later as a pastor to his father's funeral. And he said, I had done, I'd, I'd been, I, you know, my yesterday was bad. And he said, I was dreading having to see that girl. And he said, after the funeral, she made her way right to me. And she said, I just want you to know that you don't have to worry about what you did. God has made my life wonderful. I've got a great husband and children. I've got, I'm, I'm blessed with a career. I'm, I'm, everything's going well for me. And you are more than forgiven. 
He said, Jesus can take care of your yesterdays. Amen. <laughs> He's not just a God of today. He can handle your yesterdays. You can't. <laughs> oh, yes. That was witnessing as far as I was concerned. Yes. In a message. That, that was talking about himself. Yes. Oh, yeah. I can only lead others to Christ if I'm willing to be honest about myself. Yes. This is not about being respectable. Amen. 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 I see people who, who spent uh, 13 months getting close to Jesus in a program. And, and then they, they're, they're on fire. And then they go out and they become more concerned about a respectable career and not using drugs or alcohol than they are about being close to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And I, I'm, I'm going to be human about it. Of course, sometimes I've been overattached to worldly career and other stuff. But don't, don't get your, your, your horse before the cart. Cart before the horse, excuse me. <laughs> if, if you think that sobriety is simply the absence of drugs and alcohol and you're living in other ways in your life that are, in a way that's not in harmony with the Holy Ghost. That's nothing. You, you, you don't realize the real sobriety is being close to Jesus. If I'm not walking in His presence, I'm not sober. I may be doing a whole bunch of Good stuff. I may be working a job every day. I may not be out there stealing and using and doing all this terrible stuff anymore. But am I in the presence of the Lord? Am I therefore a witness? Have I gone through many days and not touched one life? Because my priorities are like these stargazing apostles. Amen. I am so busy trying to discern when God is going to do this, this, and this instead of focusing on what he's already called me to do. Amen. Which is to be a witness. <laughs> How many times have you met a person on the real level of their life and asked them questions as they feel comfortable with you about how what they've been through in their life and then you meet them in that in that real life story with your story in a way that you can you can as as the spirit prompts you can let them know who got you through the same thing amen that's witnessing and it doesn't say that they knocked on any doors going door to door i'm not talking about ne necessary fundraising for some people i'm talking about the real witnessing is not just once a week you go out with the witnessing team and knock on folks' doors. What about the rest of the week? Every day I'm a witness. Oh, yeah. Am I leading them just simply to write church doctrine? Or am I really leading people to Jesus? Can they experience Christ through me? If I have power, yes. If I spend enough time with him, they'll see it. They said of these fellows, later on the Sanhedrin said, these fellows are not even educated. But one thing we know about them, it's obvious that they've been with Jesus. <laughs> I heard one pastor say, I wouldn't have had Peter for my janitor. Oh, rough, crazy Peter. Here I am with a seminary doctorate. Pastoring a big church. It's embarrassing. People could walk in his shadow and get healed. <laughs> All the stuff we count as important. All of the theological preparation. And please do study Hebrew and Greek and discern all of the history behind the Bible and know it better. But if the, if the Holy Ghost doesn't speak to you through it, it's all for naught. Oh, yes. I want to stay simple and childlike in the Lord. I don't want to be a, a, a gazing Christian 
who's not really rooted in the here and now. Am I being fully myself in the present? Or am I stuck in future tripping? Or am I wrapped up in the past in a way that I cannot disentangle myself from it? I need to be in today. I need to be in his presence right now. Don't leave Jerusalem in the morning until you get the Holy Ghost. So somebody's life, at work or elsewhere, can be touched by you. The doors of every church ought to be just overflowing with people trying to get in here. After this pandemic, I hope people will take God more seriously. Amen. And stop trying to figure him out and surrender to him. <laughs> there is no way to nail God down. He runs the whole cosmos. Amen. How, how can we dare try to put God in a box? <laughs> I want him to talk to me through his word. When I get through talking about the, the original meaning in the Greek and all that stuff, if the Holy Spirit doesn't speak, what good is it? Amen. You do you. I need to do me. And let God be God. We get to be human. We're stuck in, in the limitations of being human. And when we stay that way, he can use us. Yes. Amen. Can't use you if you're trying to put on a religious act. Religion killed Jesus. Amen. Am I right? I'm not just talking about Judaism. Religion today in the Christian community is, is guilty in a certain way of discounting the Christ Amen. the same way they did. Amen. We have so much religious knowledge, but no knowledge of the one who's behind it. Have you really talked to Jesus from your heart? Someone testified earlier about just saying, Lord Jesus, help. Sometimes that's a much deeper prayer than all of the musings and stuff we just say out of our lips, but not from our hearts. God wants to deal with you, the real you, in the real here and now. So stop stargazing. Let's all do that. Ask him to help us to stop doing it. He helped them. He sent angels to tell them to stop looking up there. You, we're not going to change out of nobility. We need him to change us. Lord, stretch my devotional life. Help me to wake up whenever you want me to wake up. I don't need an alarm clock. You make it not religious. You wake me up. I guarantee you he will. And when he leads you naturally into his presence, without all of your machinations, you, you will walk in his presence throughout that day. Glory to his name. I don't know about you. I just want to do me. And let God do him. Oh yes. I'm trying to use the young people's language here. To make some sense out of this word of God. Too many people are trying to do what they saw somebody else doing. You can't imitate this thing. He didn't say, come imitate me. He said, come follow me. Oh, yes. This Christ, whom they saw go into heaven, is coming back. The angel said to them, yes. When they finally realized that he was gone in the way that they, they were used to him, they went back to Jerusalem. He was not going to be up in the clouds. In, he was up in the clouds, but he was, he was not going to be present in his human self on the earth. He was going to be within them through the power of the anointing. The Holy Spirit makes the Father and the Son present in us, not up in the clouds inside of us. 
Oh, glory. Men of Galilee, women of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up? <laughs> let us, let the Holy Spirit really take over from within. Oh, yes. He will lead us gently, safely through. Glory to his name. I thank God that this son of the living God, Christ, both man and God, was willing to die as a witness. The word martyros in Greek means witness. It also means a martyr, a person who's willing to die. How much dying am I willing to do to witness to a crucified Christ? He did rise from the dead in power. But I can't get to Sunday without a few Fridays in my life. That's true. Friday precedes Sunday. They nailed him. This precious son of God. To the wood of a cross. Oh yes they did. I don't know how you feel about it. But I'm so glad that he was willing to die for us. To show us how to witness. To be in us. A grain of wheat had to die and fall to the ground. To bear much fruit. Oh yes, they put him in a borrowed tomb. All night Friday night. All day Saturday. All night, Saturday night. Oh, but early Sunday morning, Jesus got up, y'all. Glory to his name. And we have power. Power to witness. Power to touch lives. Power to minister. Power to heal. Power to do whatever. To preach his word. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank God. There may be somebody here this morning or listening to us who needs to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Call the number 520-884-1569. Let them know. If you already know him, you don't have a church home. You want to be a member of the Trinity family, commit today. Call that number, 520-884-1569. Come to Jesus. You've tried everything else. Your way has not worked. So surrender to him. Come home, home, ye who are weary, come home. Come to Jesus. On next Sunday, we do have our regular service at 11 o'clock here at Trinity. Come and join us. Sunday school will be at 10.30, excuse me, 10 o'clock, and the service will begin at 11 o'clock. Come to join together in fellowship. Notice the emphasis. They were all together at this occasion when he went up. They were all together at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descended with power. Amen. There's a special blessing that comes when the people of God come together. Please come. You may be tired and, and, and gotten used to staying at home, but you need to come. We are part of community. We cannot even heal without each other. God bless you. 
And now unto him was able to keep us from falling, but present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be all glory, honor, dominion, and majesty, henceforth, now and forevermore. And all the people said, 